Antonio Vivaldi was an Italian composer of the Baroque era and was very well known during his time as a performer and a teacher. One of the types of music that he liked to compose was called concerto. A concerto is a type of composition that is written for a solo instrument and is accompanied by an ensemble, with the soloist having a more prominent role and the ensemble having a supporting role. Many concertos are written in a three-movement structure. Think of movements in classical music like episodes of your favorite show. Each episode can be watched separately, but they're a part of a larger story arc. Movements in music function in much the same way. Each movement contains its own internal structure, but it is part of a larger architecture. And one of Vivaldi's most famous violin concertos is known as the Four Seasons. Originally written in the early 1700s, they were eventually published in 1725 as part of a collection of 12 concertos called The Contest Between Harmony and Invention. The Four Seasons is actually made up of four separate concertos, each concerto representing a different season of the year. Concerto number one represents spring, concerto number two represents summer, three, autumn, and number four represents winter. To help reinforce this fact, Vivaldi does something that was a bit unconventional at the time. The concertos are published alongside four sonnets, one for each of the concertos. The text of the sonnets depicts scenes from each of the seasons, birds singing in the spring, a summer storm, the harvest and hunt in autumn, and the ice and snow of winter. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the first concerto, Spring. The text of the sonnet for Spring goes something like this. Springtime is upon us. The birds celebrate her return with festive song, and murmuring streams are softly caressed by the breezes. Thunderstorms, those heralds of spring, roar, casting their dark mantle over heaven. Then they die away to silence, and the birds take up their charming songs once more. On the flower-strewn meadow, with leafy branches rustling overhead, the goat herd sleeps, his faithful dog beside him. Led by the festive sound of rustic bagpipes, nymphs and shepherds lightly dance beneath the brilliant canopy of spring. The rhyming scheme gets lost in the translation from Italian to English, but if we look at the original Italian, we can see that the rhyming pattern is much clearer. Just like the concertos, the sonnets are broken up into three sections. So this first section goes along with the first movement of the concerto, and this part goes with the second movement, and this part goes with the last movement. So we should hear birds singing and thunderstorms in the first movement, the second movement should have a sleeping shepherd and a dog, and the last movement should sound like a party with dancing and bagpipes. Not only does Vivaldi print the sonnets alongside the music, but he actually references them in the score, which we'll see later. This is one of the most important things about Vivaldi's Four Seasons. He's trying to tell a story with the music. He's trying to make the violin sound like a bird singing. He's trying to make the ensemble sound like a thunderstorm. This type of composition is called program music. Program music is a type of instrumental music associated with poetic, descriptive, or narrative subject matter. In this case, Vivaldi is using the sonnets as the narrative and writing the music to try and evoke the different scenes from the sonnets. The name program music comes from the practice of printing the narrative material in the concert programs for the audience. Examples of program music go as far back as the Renaissance, but Vivaldi's Four Seasons is one of the most well-known examples from the Baroque era. Now let's listen to spring and try to hear the different elements from the spring sonnet.
Thank you for watching. I hope you get a chance to listen to the rest of the four seasons. I'll leave a link in the description to the other sonnets if you want to read along with them while you listen to the music. And I would like to thank Noxus of America again for helping me get the music for this episode, as well as my patrons on Patreon who help make all of this possible. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a patron, check out the link below.